Merry Christmas Eve from Carol Clemens, Life Enrichment Ministries. And you might be acquainted with me and you might not, but I want to speak to the hurting heart today. I provide counseling nationwide by phone and by Skype. And uh, all my information is on my website, carolclemens.org. And that's C-A-R-O-L-C-L-E-M-A-N-S dot org. Go to the About Me page. You can read about my life, my education, my ministry, uh, everything about what I do. And I love sharing God's truth through teaching for churches and conferences, for counseling, as I said, nationwide from a Bible perspective, being baptized in the Holy Ghost 61 years, and so I look at the counseling principles through the Word of God. And then by writing, I have over 345 articles on my website, carolclemens.org. And I also um, write for uh, the Perspectives Magazine from the Indiana Bible College. And I'm also on YouTube, as I'm going to post this uh, recording on YouTube. Little excerpts of things to try to lift up and encourage people. And what I do all year long is work with people regarding marriage and uh, marital issues, uh, parenting issues, healing for damaged emotions, pornography recovery uh, counseling that I provide, all type of counseling that you can, again, read on the About Ministry page. But what I felt to do today, other than just send out a Merry Christmas greeting from my home to yours, is to talk to the hearts that's hurting. I have a friend, pastor friend that we've known uh, about for years and known, and his wife, which is even younger than I am, died suddenly about less than two weeks ago. We have another minister friend missionary that has worked in the mission area for years and years, and his wife is in the hospital with double pneumonia, and she's had Crohn's disease for years. And people have gone through uh, recent, like I said, deaths. My, my uh, own family, my husband and I have been married for 46 and a half years. We've lost all four of our parents. Uh, my brother died two years ago. And so, and I've had several friends down through the years die. And they, they died in the Lord. And the thing that I want to bring, grief is a real thing. It, it actually physical, you can feel it in your heart. But I'm here to tell you that God is the God of all comfort. He is come not only to bring us salvation, but he came to heal the broken in heart and to set the captives free. Go to Isaiah 61 and read that. And it, so that's beyond salvation. He came to spread the good news, the gospel, but he came to bring healing to our brokenness. So if we're in the holiday season and there's sickness, there's loneliness, maybe your spouse walked away from you. Maybe there's divorce issues. Maybe your children are suffering. You know what? I want to challenge everybody. The way we get through the heartache and the pain and the adversity, and in our 46 and a half years of marriage, we have suffered adversity in ministry. Our life has been turned up down. There has been moves that we have made that we never expected to happen. And you might look at people in ministry and think, well, look, they look like everything's wonderful. They don't know what it feels like. I've suffered enough things in life that I can be touched by the feeling of your infirmities, even though they may be different than mine. And that's what God offers is above everything. He is touched. He made you emotionally. He created every one of us when we were in our mother's womb. That's from Psalms 139. And he knew our whole life before it ever began. He knows the day of our birth and he knows the day of our death or he knows that he's coming in our lifetime at the moment in the twinkling of an eye. In an instant moment, God could come any time. So when I'm talking to you about dealing with the tough things in life, if the only thing that we feel like we can praise God for, because the Lord tells us in everything, give thanks, we can thank him for salvation. You know, that's the most important thing on this earth anyway. All of the things that we have, looking behind me, the arm wire, the portion of the Christmas tree, everything that I have life is going to disappear, deteriorate, and be destroyed. 
we have to look beyond this. And one reason I can say this with a lot of enthusiasm, I was raised by a pastor father that studied eschatology and he taught it into my heart to let me know that if I've been baptized in water and have received the Holy Ghost, I've got a joy and a life here that I can focus on the joy in the Lord that God's provided through salvation, even in the midst of heartache. You know, the Bible said that God puts our bottles, our tears, excuse me, in bottles. And I've said many times, I have cried bottles. You might say buckets of tears. We can say according to the word of God, I have cried bottles of tears. He must have a big warehouse holding my tears. But in the middle of any of that grief and heartache and change and trouble that has hit my life, the devil has never destroyed my deep joy in the Lord. And these tears that are coming are not from sadness. They're Holy Ghost tears. We've got to focus on what we have in God. In, in Christ Jesus, he is the hope of glory. And we get to looking down here on this terra firma and the things that we don't have anymore. The Christmases that will never be the same again. Like when I was raising my children and grandpa and grandma, my parents lived a mile away. My brother was an hour away. My sister was across the nation, but we would talk on the telephone at the holiday time. And things just seemed safe. But in these years, my children now are 38 and 42. One lives in California. One happens to live here. But we don't even know how long we're going to live here. Only God knows our future. So what I'm telling you is to focus on the blessings that you have in this day. If you can breathe, if you can walk and talk, and if your brain is working and you're not in the hospital, even if you're taking chemo and you're sick, you have something to praise God for in the knowledge of salvation because I just recently read, and it would be good for everyone to do this, the book of Ecclesiastes again. And yet he was the wisest man of his day and he had all this God knowledge that God allowed him to write and share with us in Ecclesiastes, in the Song of Solomon, in Proverbs. And the thing about it that he said, all the things on earth are just vanity. It's like a vapor. The scripture tells us in more places, our life, is like, our life is like a vapor that's here today and it's gone tomorrow. So what is the most important thing that we should be focusing on? It's looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So if I can do anything today to help you to get through this next two or three days in this holiday season when you see and hear about, and even if you're on Facebook, I use it for God's glory. I've got my own personal page, Carol Theobald Clemens. I've got Life Enrichment Ministries Incorporated. I've got a group called Growing in God. I have another group, Worldwide Apostolic Believers. And I repost on there all the time articles and videos trying to speak faith and hope. But I do this all year, helping people walk through the pain in life. Because if we're looking at our own issues, many times we have what I call tunnel vision. And when you put your hands like that and you look through it, all the peripheral, everything else you can't see. And when people are hurting, all they see is the negative things that's in their tunnel vision that Satan wants us all to focus on. What I don't have. That's what Satan wants us to focus on. What we have to focus on is what do I have? What can I give thanks to God for? Knowing that he could come any moment. And when we start changing the way that we think, the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 1 that we are transformed, or, or excuse me, Romans 12, 1 and 2, we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, but we can be transformed by renewing the mind. That's basically what I do in counseling. I have people look at their own issues and say, now what is God's truth about this? And as we start changing the way that we think about our own circumstances, we can have faith in God. You know, faith is about trusting God when you don't see the answer that you want. Hebrews 11, and you can read it for yourself. So if you're still trusting God, but you don't have your answers, you have great faith and you're going to make it. And God's going to give you strength one day at a time. I can attest to that in my 71 years of life and my 61 years of having the Holy Ghost. 
So I want to encourage you, choose, choose, I want to say it again, choose to think on the things that have good report. Go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, and read that. It said, don't worry about anything, but thank God and give him the glory as you put your request unto him with thanksgiving. I'm quoting ad-libbing from Philippians 4, 7. And it said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thanksgiving, make your needs known to God. And the promise is the peace of God that passeth all understanding will enter your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I'm challenging you today, no matter what your situation, yes, you might need to cry a little bit every day for what you're going through, but you can choose, say, I'm going to thank you, Lord. I'm going to thank you, Lord. And I've got on my website, and on, uh, I'm on Instagram also, and again, YouTube. I don't know, remember if I mentioned that. I have several videos on YouTube channel Carol Clemens. Just like this is where I'm going to post it to start with, and then I'm going to repost it on my Facebook pages. But we can choose to thank God for his mercy unto us, for salvation most of all, and for that hope that we have in him, that we're going to rule and reign on a new heaven and new earth. This, this life, my mother lived to 93, but that's nothing compared to eternity that will never come to an end. So as I look at the negative things in my life that I don't have anymore or that I'm needing for God to supply and I can't see it at this moment, I can give him praise. I can choose to thank him in everything, give thanks. I pray that this has been encouragement to you, that you will choose to thank God, that you will look unto him who is the author and the finisher of your faith. And any negative thought that comes into your mind, that is from Satan. God never puts negative thoughts in our mind. And so we can say, away with you, Satan, just like Jesus did in the wilderness. And we can start quoting scripture. I posted some scriptures out of Psalms last night. And I said, if you're troubled, read these scriptures over and over and over. And you'll be renewing your mind to look at your life through God's eyes, through the word of God. So may God bless you. May you have a blessed Christmas no matter how or what is missing or how sad or depressed you might feel. You have the choice through the word of God to bring yourself up out of that. And if you can't do it on your own, I'll just add, go to my website, read about the counseling, and I'm available by phone nationwide and by Skype. So, or by FaceTime on, um, on the... Um, not YouTube, excuse me, back to Facebook. I couldn't got FaceTime and Facebook mixed up there. But Facebook on Messenger, there is a video contact. And if you're on Facebook and I'm on it, we can talk to each other and do counseling through Facebook for a minimal offering. And I do it as unto the Lord. So God bless you no matter how you're feeling. You are blessed if you're alive and you can hear this video. So I pray a blessing over you that you will focus on Jesus and have a blessed day this day and Christmas day in the Lord in Jesus name.